Thanks for joining us again. This is one of those return programs, a retro program we've done before. His name is Mark Ellis. Here's a man who put a word on it, became something that he got involved in, and it really changed him. A California guy in business, now heavily involved in Men of Valor because of Put a Word on It. Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by the Lee Company, wonderful supporters of this program. We thank them so much for all their dedication. I like the guys that volunteer. I'm a volunteer, it's now been four years. Well, there's another man who's now at the four year mark here at Men of Valor. Mark Ellis is a man who went through the business world, but had some things that he had a battle in his own life, but now all of it because of the Put a Word on It program. That got him involved in Men of Valor. That's what what we stand for that's what he stands for gotta to listen to his story because boy is he invested in these men mark i'm fascinated put a word on it. it's the name of our program yes, and yet sir. it's your whole basis for being involved with the program how did it that is. happen it is i was looking for some place to volunteer here locally i was at the tail end of my career and uh i was investigating different types of nonprofits here in Nashville. And I, uh, almost without exception, they all mentioned Men of Valor to me. And so I reached out to initially David Miller, who's the development manager, who is responsible for the, uh, uh, the properties. And, uh, and then I reached out to Kurt Campbell and ultimately Tevin and, uh, my first meeting uh, at their old offices was a put a word on it. And uh, there were six guys, I think, in aftercare uh, at that time. And, you know, I had no idea what I was walking into. Uh, you know, prison ministry, you know, what are these guys going to be like? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, the Lord uh, opened the door, so... I came and uh, it was awesome. Did you say anything at first? Or did you just oh, sit sure. there and observe the first no, meeting? No, no, no. I, I participated. And these guys were all very vocal. They were all engaged. Uh, they were into it. And I think that that truly helped. But then I got to know some of them, you know, as far as their backgrounds and stories and whatnot. And I was just like, well, they're just like me in many respects. You know, I just didn't make the the decision that uh, got me imprisoned prison you know? ministry is so different do you hang like you say you hang around and you tell people well i work with guys who just got out of incarceration what oh yeah how can they relate to oh, you yeah yeah well you know i have i have stuff in my background I've, i have a wounded background just like most of us quite frankly and i was uh i was going deep in things that I shouldn't have been in alcohol and lust and sex. And, uh, I was in a very, very dark place and the Lord rescued me in uh, 1998. And ever since I've been transformed, I've been, uh, wanting to serve. Um, and I just didn't have the opportunity to do that, you know, f with my whole heart, with all of, you know, whatever time I needed to spend in volunteering. So I got to a point, uh, the tail end of my career, I was uh, turning 65 and uh, I just, I, I reached out to my uh, uh, local outreach pastor at church for uh, ministry opportunities that I could get plugged into because I wanted to make a difference. I, I was just feeling like I was just not doing anything that was, making a difference in anyone's life. So uh, I ended up uh, at Men of Valor. I found in the time I've spent with the men, I want to live up to what I'm telling them to live up to. It's literally changed me. Have you found that oh, about yeah. yourself? Oh, yeah. I get a huge blessing out of coming here and helping these guys. And it's been that way from day one. 
Rudy. I mean, it's it's just awesome, you know. And all I'm I'm not really doing all that much, you know. I I engage these guys, I support them, I uh, I give them some hope, I uh, you know teach them some of God's word. I try to make the word come alive for them, but I'm just there to encourage. I'm just here to encourage these guys because they need, they need encouragement. You know, they need to know that somebody loves them. They need to know that, um, we're going to give them, help them with a second chance. Um, and you know, they're grateful and I just love doing that. How important is consistency to these men? Uh, very, I think. You know, I, I'm just, I'm just Mark, you know, showing up and, uh, I get to know them. I, I make a point of knowing their names, which I think is really important and, um, just, you know, hanging with them and, uh, I'm here all the time. So what are the other days? You, Cause I know I come are- on uh, Mondays. I teach a, uh, John study. Uh, on Monday afternoons, and then I come in. I have an authentic manhood class that uh, I co-teach um, on Monday evenings, and then I come in on Tuesday mornings for put a word on it. And then I have a uh, discipleship group that I help facilitate uh, on Thursdays. So you're doing a lot of preparation too. You can't yeah, just you do come a lot in. of prep. Yeah, which is good because you know I wasn't really um, uh, you know I read the Bible but I'm not, I wasn't really a Bible guy, you know, but this kind of, um, has been very good for me personally, getting into the word and studying the word and being able to discuss the word with these guys. And once again, making it come alive to them. And, uh, that's, it's really a blessing. Little did you know back in the nineties when you said, Lord, I'm yours, that this would happen. Oh yeah. No idea. No idea. And I, you know, frankly, prison ministry scared me, uh, you know, in thinking about it just because of all the, you know, the images that you think about when you think about prisoners and how rough of an environment it is. And these guys are just like, they'll eat me alive, you know, type of thing. But, you know, these guys that are here at the Ridge are awesome, almost without exception. And I, you know, I love them to to pieces, Uh, you know, I do. I do. Well, the men do not want to be defined by the blues they wore or the way the things they did in their lives. Yeah. And so you give them that that dignity. They just want some of yeah. that. Well, they're good guys. You know, they just made some mistakes. Yeah. You know? Well, let me ask you, you know, since you've been in the classes, the name of our Uh-oh. program is put a word on it. So, <laughs> and our guys will ramble off all kinds of Bible verses. And I say, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Get me down yeah, to one yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down to a word. <laughs> well, I'll give you a word and then I'll ramble on it. All couple right. Of verses, I'm, I'm okay. all in favor of that. Uh, my word is love. And uh, I come to uh, John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. By this, uh, you will be my disciples if you love one another. He says it three times in two verses to love one another. And it's, you know, when you have faith and you've been given the Holy Spirit, I just think that the love is a natural outcropping. You know, the fruit of the Spirit begins with love. And in many uh, commentaries, it's a singular fruit, love. And as a result of love, then you have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, etc. I kind of ask, do you have to work at it? Because some people are not lovable. No, I, I don't. Uh, you know, maybe I'm not lovable to some of these guys. I don't know, but I, I just, I embrace them. I hug them. I, you know, laugh with them. You know, I love on them, and I, uh, you know, that's just my little niche that I do. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to Mark. I certainly did. You know what I can tell you? He was in the high-tech business world for his whole career, and he's got that communication skill. And I know that works for him as he communicates his love for these men in the work that he does. And uh, the word love, I mean, you can't get any better than that. That's God's love for him, God's love for us, and that love he turns around and gives these men. I just love the volunteers that use from their lives to offer and give something to the men here at Men of Valor. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time as we put a word on it.